The list is all about animals. We'll cuddle cows. Am I supposed to buy her dinner first? Take flight with pigeons. Pigeons sort of used to be the Ferrari of pets. Learn a few things from pigs. Pigs live each day to the fullest. And do a personality profile for a cat. But I'm going to have to ask you a few questions. It's all about animals. It's your life, it's your list, and it starts right now. Hey everyone, I'm Jimmy Rhodes. And I'm Christina Guerrero. Now, here at The List, we are big animal fans, so we decided to make today all about animals. Let's kick things off with an unusual health trend called cow cuddling. That's right, it's you and a cow, an actual cow, and the two of you cuddle. And when she says you, she means me. We're learning about the health benefits of me hugging it out with a heifer, and that's our featured story at the top of the list. You've heard of therapy dogs, therapy horses, even therapy cats, although in my experience, cats don't really care about your wellness. Well, move on over, run-of-the-mill therapy animals, because we're cow cuddling. Is there a best way to go about cow cuddling? You're doing it. Yeah. What, am I supposed to buy her dinner first? Anything? <laughs> We met up with Sarah, April, and Maisie the cow at Arizona Goat Yoga. Maisie, you're the sweetest cow ever. They specialize in animal affection therapy, which includes lots of ways to zen out on the farm. Goat yoga, alpaca affection, pony petting. But I chose to cuddle up with a cow for the many bovine benefits. First, it helps you relax. I am right now, and I never thought I'd say this, cuddling with a cow. <laughs> What is this? What am I doing? Farm animals have a lower heart rate than humans. So when you cuddle with them, it helps bring your heart rate down and you relax a bit. So your heart rate kind of goes to match theirs? Yes. Okay. Like a baby cuddling with its mom. Cows also have higher body temperature than humans. So they're like a huge walking heating pad. But not just any cow will let you cuddle. Therapy cows are used to human interaction and no bull. They enjoy the affection just as much as you. It's just as good for the animals as it is for the people. Next, there's no judgment. Is there a talk therapy aspect to this? Do people actually talk to Maisie? Oh yes, they are sharing her all their problems. Okay, does she ever like divulge, tell secrets? No, you can sit here and you'd be like, Maisie, my boyfriend dumped me. I just can't handle life right now. And she's like, it's fine. Talk, don't talk, it's up to you. But if you do divulge some secrets. Mom always loved the other boys best. Nothing uh, ever mattered, nothing else matters. She's not judging me at all. Nope. These therapists won't lower their opinion of you because they don't speak English and they roll in their own poop, so how could they? The final health benefit, you'll de-stress and slow down. I gotta tell you, we are so stressed out and we are so frenetic and we're always late and we're always busy and to take a time out of your day to just cuddle a cow? Yeah. Exactly. Other techniques to de-stress like meditation or regular yoga require stillness and ridiculous form-fitting pants, but cow therapy lets you just breathe and cuddle up close. And it's really relaxing. <laughs> Finding our harmony by hugging a heifer is at the top of the list. A recent study confirms what many pet owners have suspected for years. Your cat may be crazy. Teresa Strasser looks at how researchers can scientifically analyze simple things like litter box issues to answer the question, is your cat a psycho? Sure, your cat's adorable, but is there just a pinch of cuckoo under that fluff? A vet-approved questionnaire from the University of Liverpool can help determine just how crazy your kitty might be. You don't look like a psycho, but I'm going to have to ask you a few questions. It's a lot of work to go through all the questions with your cat, but I think it's important. The more you know about your cat, the better your relationship is going to be. Michael Moorefield from Altered Tales in Phoenix, Arizona, says there are a few behaviors cat owners should pay close attention to, starting with excessive meowing or vocalization. Item number 14 on the cat questionnaire. Cats can make more sounds than birds. They can chirp, they can chatter, they can meow. And surprisingly, these meows are meant only for humans to hear. Cats don't meow at other cats. Cats learn how to meow to communicate with us. And they have different types of meows. There's the normal chatter, talkative, I like you meow. And there is the manipulative meow that sounds like a baby cry on purpose so that we get them what they want. When it gets excessive, Michael says a trip to the vet is a good idea. 
Aggression is the next behavior we'll examine. It's item number 32 on the Kitty Quiz. Aggression towards people is a very serious concern, but it might be something you don't understand because your cat is trying to maybe play with you or doesn't know any other acceptable behaviors on how to communicate. Michael says you may need to call in the pros if it's serious enough. If the aggression continues significantly toward another animal in the home or yourself, you should talk to a veterinarian or a cat behaviorist. We'll wrap with litter box issues found under violating house rules. That's number 26 on your cat questionnaire. Litter box issues are the most common reason cats are returned back to shelters. And there can be a lot of reasons why. It could be a stress in the home, a new baby, a new animal. Another one is you have one litter box for multiple cats. If you have multiple cats, you need to have multiple litter boxes. He recommends a vet visit or cat behaviorist to fix those litter box issues. If you'd like to take the cat questionnaire, check us out on thelisttv.com. Putting our cat on the site couch. We pass the psycho test. Barely. To scratch out bad behaviors. As humans, we mostly learn from books, teachers, and parents. But today, they're stepping aside so we can soak up wisdom from a creature and one you might not expect. Jackie Denker has life lessons from pigs. Today, we're stepping out of the classroom and into a pigsty to get schooled by pigs. Pigs are amazingly smart animals. They're super, super sweet. And yeah, we can learn a ton from pigs. All right, so put those textbooks away and look at the pigs. Exactly. So we grabbed some overalls and headed to Better Piggies Rescue to talk to owner Danielle Betterman about what life lessons we can learn from piggies. First up, Danielle says for hogs, cleanliness is key. Something I definitely was not expecting her to say. They like their sleep areas to be really, really clean. They like their blankets to be nice and fluffy. So yeah, they're super, super clean. Who would have thought that? If your mom's saying, Jackie, your room's a pigsty, it must be really, really clean. Ah, there you go, yeah. mom. <laughs> Next, she says pigs remind us to love friends and family unconditionally. Pigs are very bonded with one another. They have really close friendships. They have relationships too, oh, so. little piggy romances. Exactly. Yeah, that sounded cute until she said this. If they have piglets, they'll branch off. The mama will take care of the piglets and the dad becomes a bachelor again. Wow, the mom's very understanding. I was just about <laughs> to say we can learn relationship advice from them, but nah, I don't know about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. They'd be in the dog, the pig house. The pig house, exactly. <laughs> Next, Danielle says these guys would tell us that communication is everything. Pigs are very vocal with one another. So they're talking to each other, they speak the same language. Pig Latin? <laughs> and you'd think that their talking would sound like snorts, but actually... Pigs don't really snort, they just yell at each other. So it's like a high-pitched scream. Oh. Jersey, we're like that too. We love to scream at each other. So I guess in life, when in doubt, scream. Or self-control is cool too. And Danielle says if pigs could talk, they'd tell us not to sweat the small stuff. They get in fights with one another and then they forget about it. And besides that, they don't sweat the small stuff because they legit can't. So pigs do not sweat. Uh, they don't have sweat glands. Which Danielle says is why they love the mud. It keeps them cool. That's like a spa thing for us. Exactly. They're like living the life. Finally, pigs can teach us that life is short, so enjoy each and every day. Pigs live each day to the fullest. They eat, they sleep, oh they interact with one another, and that's their day, and they're just the happiest they can be. So we can learn a lot from pigs by just being kind to one another and just being present in our everyday occurrences. Learning life lessons from pigs. This keeps going all about animals. Train your dog with love languages. Don't chase your dog. Have your dog chase you. And the healing energy of horsepower. Horses have this natural ability that they absorb energy from people. Plus, what pigeons can teach us about love. They are huge romantics. That's all next on the list. Hey YouTube, I know you're right in the middle of watching, but I just wanted to remind you to hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss one minute of the list. Okay, now back to the show. Welcome back friends. 
Animals, like people, have different ways of communicating, and that's especially true for dogs. Figure out what they're saying, and it'll make bonding and training much easier. So let's learn about your dog's love language. Hi, sweetie, hi. Some dogs can't control their joy when they see us, while others, not so much. Like humans, they have different ways of showing their affection. They were born to help us, and we can show mutual love and respect in any love language. Angie Woods, canine behavior specialist, tells us about three of the dog love languages and how knowing them will improve the relationship with your pup. First up, play. They may do a play bow with us and be really flirty, but some dogs, particularly herding breeds, tend to come up sometimes and poke you with their nose. If play is your dog's love language, it can be used as a great way to bond, but it's important to follow these guidelines. We want to make sure that everybody stays respectful, that we're not too rough with them and teaching them to play in a rough manner. One great way to bond with your dog who loves to play is the chase game. Now, there's an important caveat here. Don't chase your dog. Have your dog chase you. Number one, you don't want to teach them that they're faster than you, right? Reminding your dog that you are the alpha in the relationship during play will help establish who's boss when it comes time to train. Up next, physical affection. They tend to come up and nudge your elbow a lot and get in your way when you're working on the computer and really being a little bit annoying sometimes because they're begging for so much attention. A great way to show physical affection is through grooming. We might use brushes and combs. We could use a damp little cloth and really being gentle and rhythmic. That mimics the way that they might groom each other. Our final doggy love language, acts of service. Typically, these are working dogs. Retrievers, collies, sheepdogs, and shepherds are just a few dog breeds that usually have acts of service as their love language. The biggest thing I could recommend for people, if you do nothing else, is just to go walk with your dog. It sounds like a simple thing, but not only are they doing something for you, but you are doing a huge service for them because dogs, just like us, we're bipedal. Dog walks give pet owners opportunities to socialize their dogs as well as practice commands, which speaks to their love language. But don't forget to bring the treats. Best friends bonding with love language. There are around 4 million horses in the United States, and many of them are used in holistic ways. Here's a look at three ways horses are helping people heal. Coming in at number one, Medina, Ohio's Forever Amber Acres uses retired horses to provide therapeutic empathy to veterans and frontline workers. Horses have this natural ability that they absorb energy from people. There, how's that? The free program asks participants to describe how the pandemic impacted them putting their thoughts on brightly colored index cards. The pink one was about love and family and friends and how important they are. And when the folks stand and reflect on what they've written on the cards, the horses sense their energy and come to empathize. Their hearts can connect with human hearts 50 feet away. The horses teach us how to be present, how to stay in the moment, and how to like identify our challenges and to move forward. If you're a veteran or frontline worker, you can schedule a free session at foreveramber.org. At number two, Los Angeles, California's Urban Saddles program is using horses to give boys and girls equestrian gang intervention. This place is so important because kids have the opportunity to dream. When they get to get here and they get to get back to the basics and get back to nature and make those bonds. Guan Featherstone started the program located just outside of downtown LA to give kids like Bryce Bias a place to escape street gangs and guns. I'll be over here riding these horses and I'll be getting it done and I'll be, I'll be cowboying up. Easy show. All right. You can support this nonprofit at urbansaddles.org. And the third way horses are helping people heal, Pinellas Park, Florida's Saddle Up Riding Club is improving the lives of folks with disabilities. For the rider who's maybe in a wheelchair or unable to walk, the movement that the horse makes is taking the same thing with their hips and moving them back and forth. So it's working those core muscles, their balance, and helping to build their strength quite a bit. And 75% of their clientele is autistic. Any mother would agree that when you see your child happy and enjoying things that all children can enjoy, it's definitely something that is hard to put into words. You can support them at SaddleUpRidingClub.org. And those were three ways horses are helping folks from many walks of life. Lots more to come on the list. Stay with us.
It's your life. It's your list. We're celebrating Pride Month. Go to thelisttv.com to learn more. Welcome back. One of the wonders of the animal world calls the ocean home. Whales are by far the biggest creatures on this planet, but they're a lot more than muscle and blubber. We have five facts to share about these amazing marine mammals. Whales are mystical creatures. I have stood in the water with my boots in the ocean and felt the breath of a humpback whale and it never knew I was there. We spoke with marine ecologist, Dr. Michelle Forney to learn five things we didn't know about whales. First, they age well. Humpback whales can live to be over 100 years old. Bowhead whales can live to be over 200 years old, which means that, that they have been around in some cases since the signing of the American Constitution, Declaration of Independence. All of human history could have been observed by a single bowhead whale in Alaskan waters. Next, they can hold their breath for a long time. Some of our deepest diving whales and our longest breath holders can hold their breath for up to two hours underwater and can dive hundreds of meters down. Our third factoid, their social structure varies. Killer whale social structure, they'll stay in family groups from when they're born until when they die. Humpback whales are not quite the same. Humpback whales will leave their mothers at the tender age of 12 months and will likely never interact with her again. But those family groups aren't the core of what humpback whale social structure is about. Humpback whales will build relationships with individuals that they're not related to. And in some cases, those relationships will persist for decades. The fourth thing you didn't know, they have a voice, kind of. We know that humpback whales produce long, elaborate, drawn out songs. But what people might not know also is that whales produce these very simple, very subtle, smaller call types that we believe are imbibed with a sense of voice. So you can tell a whale apart by the sound of its voice. Finally, they have a variety of call types or songs they sing. Humpback whales sing during breeding season only males sing and we think they sing in some way to transfer information about themselves to potential mates but whales also produce a call type called a feeding call to herd fish that you can make a sound that will cause herring to tighten up into a very small ball so you can eat them and those are five things you didn't know about whales next we're going to try and change your mind about pigeons that's right it's coming up Want more mouth-watering recipes? Absolutely delicious. How about the latest fitness trends? It can help calm us, improve our mood. Financial tips? People who budget will succeed. Go to thelisttv.com and get uninterrupted access to great lifestyle trends, tips, and helpful hints, all at your fingertips. You've got something that looks a little bit more unique. Get what's new, what's now, and what's next. Thelisttv.com. Welcome back. One kind of creature animal lovers are all about, birds. But while we marvel at eagles, peacocks, and pheasants, the humble pigeon is often dismissed as a rat with wings. Well, we love a good underdog story, so Teresa Strasser's taken to the sky for a fresh look at the often misunderstood pigeon. Pigeons, they get a bad rap from pestering us at the park to making their mark on our freshly washed cars. But before we throw this bird under the bus, author Rosemary Mosco says it's time to take a new look at the pigeon. Pigeons really are super, super misunderstood. I kind of think that they may be the world's most misunderstood bird. Her book, A Pocket Guide to Pigeon Watching, is chock full of reasons why we'd want to befriend this infamous fowl starting with the fact that pigeons were brought to America as pets. They are domesticated animals, just like a cat or a dog or a horse. And they live in our cities because we brought them to the cities and some of them got out and some of them are strays or ferals. But these pets were considered a status symbol back in the Victorian era. Pigeons sort of used to be the Ferrari of pets. To this day, you know, some famous people like Mike Tyson do still have pigeons. <laughs> 
Next up, these winged wonders are lovebirds for life, practicing monogamy and raising their family together. They are huge romantics. If you see two pigeons walking down the street next to each other, odds are they are like a couple for life. And like us humans, they know how to play the game of love. They will dance for each other and coo for each other. And then when they take care of their young, they'll both pitch in. Finally, the memory of a pigeon might surprise you. Science has shown that feral pigeons seem to be able to recognize human faces, or at least various humans, so they'll remember you. Then there's the urban legend of pigeons remembering us and getting revenge for shooing them away. I don't think they're that vindictive. I don't think that if you annoy a pigeon, it's going to poop on your car. Probably that pigeon is a homebody and it lives near where your car is and it just can't help it. So I don't think they have sort of a controlled poop strategy. They're able to recognize art as well. A Japanese study from Tokyo's Keio University found that pigeons could tell the difference between a Picasso and a Monet with 90% accuracy. That's a fresh look at our much maligned feathered friends. As we say, peace out to the pigeon. Well, my car's not a huge fan of pigeons, but my gosh, what a great story. You know, I think we can all learn to love pigeons just a little bit more after that. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for watching all the way to the end, YouTube. Don't forget to like this video, leave us a comment down below, and hit the subscribe button so you never miss a list. Here are some other episodes. I'm sensing a binge. <laughs>